This is my first Teachers Pay Teachers attempt uh, based on the recommendation of one of my coworkers. All right, we're going to use Google Forms to create a quiz. We're going to make it a gradable quiz. Now, this is going to take some time at the beginning, but it should save you time in grading. It will also be useful in creating data-driven instruction, even though I know most teachers have always been data-driven instructors. We're going to make a simple Google form, which is going to feature multiple choice. And the hope is that while we do this, it will improve your Microsoft Excel or spreadsheet skills. So I have my Google Documents open. I've already got a Teachers Pay Teachers uh, Forms folder already created. You can see that I've got a starred template multiple choice quiz. We're going to try and replicate this. So we're going to go ahead and go up to Create and then select Form. I'm just going to call this Test Run. I like to start all of my first questions with last name. Make this a required question. The second one I like to make first name. This way I can alphabetize my students after I've collected their results. Again, make it a required question. After that, I like to know which period they're in. That way I can sort them. I make this a multiple choice question and put in as many periods as you've got. You can click the down arrow or tab key to move to the next option and type it in. I don't need eight and go ahead and click the X. Make this a required question. This helps again with sorting. Now it's time for the actual quiz. I'm going to make more multiple choice questions. I'm just going to call them I'm just going to call them question and I'm going to change the numbering. They're going to be multiple choice and I'm going to make my choices so that there are five choices. And this is a template that we are creating. The beauty of the template is we don't care what the answers are for right now. That way we can just duplicate, change the question number so we know which one it is. Duplicate again. And we keep doing this until we've got 10 questions. We have our 10 questions, so we can go ahead and press save. We're done with our form. Now you can see that it's popped up here. And if I click back into it, it takes me to the spreadsheet. If I click on form, I can go to edit form. And clicking see responses, I could go directly to the spreadsheet. So where I'd like to be right now is the spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and rename this, clicking on the black downward arrow. I like to title mine raw underscore data. And now I'm going to make two additional sheets and rename each of those. My middle sheet I'm going to call the lookup or vertical lookup. This is where I'm going to put some information that will be looked up. The third sheet I'm just going to call graded or calculations, something along those lines. Some people call them scores. Okay. Now in the vertical lookup, I'm going to have a section where I put in my multiple choice answers. And this is going to require you to retype things that you already put into the form. The answers and then the score value of those answers. The reason I left the column off to the side is I'd like to go ahead and create column for question. I know which question number these answers go with. It helps me stay organized. A little formatting issue.
and I occasionally use bolds in order to keep things again organized for myself. Now you can go ahead and grab the corner, see how the little target comes up, the little plus sign, and drag down. Now every five, it should drop a number, and that number is going to be one because no pattern has been established. Now if I made a second batch, I went ahead and said two, go ahead and merge those boxes. And then drag it down, and I should get a continuous pattern counting up to 10. Now it hasn't merged the boxes together, I'll need to go ahead and do that on my own. All the other formatting is in place. Now my answers, if you remember the form, I called them all answer. One, answer two, through five. And that pattern thing, I'll go ahead and do that. I've got a pattern started, counting by ones. Drag down, got all those. Now I'm going to control, copy, and paste it. All these ones, because they were all the same. I really just want to show you that the form will work and do what it's supposed to do. Let's go ahead and give them values. I'm going to make them all worth one, but some of them might be worth partial credit. So all of my wrong answers are listed as a zero. My correct answer is listed as a one. My partial answer is listed as a half a point. You can put in whatever values you'd like. Just make sure you've selected the correct thing. Another advantage is your answers do not have to go in order, they just have to go with the right batch. So I need to have the five answers for number one, the five answers for number two, and so on. They do not have to be in the exact same order as they were found on the other form. Every one of them had a maximum value of one. I'm going to go ahead and make another reference cell. Total value is 10. That was on my whole quiz. The reason I'm putting, putting this in is the goal is that you make a template for yourself that you can reuse. Again, just for organizational purposes, I'm going to move things around. Okay. On grading, I'd like to have students, period, their last name, their first name, and the response for each of their questions. Finally, I'd like to have a score. Now again, for organizational purposes, I can make these look a little bit nicer. I can give a background touch to it. And I can even change the width and speed up. Okay, let's take care of the easy one first. We're going to take care of the score. The score is going to be equal to the sum of all of these cells. It's going to be divided by the total value for the quiz. I want to make sure that this doesn't change, so I'm going to use a dollar sign. That locks the column. A dollar sign in front of the number, that locks the row. So it has to go to this E2 cell, regardless of dragging and dropping or whatever else I might do. Now currently there are no scores for any of the responses, so this student would have a zero. I'd like to do one additional thing. I'd like to format the number. Because this is a score, I'm going to make it a percentage. 
now I need to go ahead and show you how to get the multiple choice quiz to grade itself. Every one of these, 1 through 10, is going to be an equal something. All of them are going to use a V or vertical lookup technique that can be found in Excel. As you type it in, you can see that Google provides information. Notice it says search criterion, the array, the index, and the sort order. Well, we're making this very, very simple. So first we need to look up off of our raw data spreadsheet the answer to question one. Once done, we put a comma. We now need to compare that answer to answers provided in our vertical lookup spreadsheet, which we can then highlight. Now because this should not change for any of the students that we will have, we're going to go ahead and lock the column and the row for that whole array. Once done, we want to say where the score value come from. And if you look at it, it's coming from the second column, column B, column C. The second column is C. We don't care about a sort order, and we're also looking for an exact match. So we're going to type the word false for that very last section. Close the parenthesis, press enter. Now, no one has provided a score, so you see two dashes, two hyphens. I'm going to save some of my work, some of my effort, and copy this to the next cell. The things I need to change, I need to change where, I need to change what answer it is going to look at. It's going to look at column F this time. And to make sure of that, I can highlight this and just go find it again. I'd like to use column F. Notice it already has the green dashed line around it. You can click on it to show you that it's going to go there. So that's good. I highlight the vertical lookup. I'm going to go to VLOOKUP spreadsheet down here and select that batch. Now I had a little hiccup. Notice that it made two boxes. Well, that can happen. So it's going to make a little change goes out to the 11th column, not stopping at the 10th and redoing itself. Checks the second value, and we're looking for an exact match, so we type in false. Again, we want to reference these columns over and over and over again, these particular cells over and over and over again. So we're going to lock them out and guarantee that we always search those ones. Since these all have the basic same look, I'm going to go ahead and speed through it and fix columns F through M match up with this basic format. Okay, that's done. All right, let's go test out our form. We're going to go to a live form. Student's name is Test. First name is Test, and he's from part of period one. Going to the first question. Fill in some that I know are not equal to 1. And we press submit. We get a nice little response. That's what our students would get. We can go and look at our actual score. The student received a 40%. And you'll notice their name didn't pop up. That's because we haven't programmed it. We want to make sure that we reference the period that they belong to. as well as their last name and their first name. If we want this to occur for additional students to follow this basic path, and remember I use those dollar signs, we'll highlight everything and just drag down. And now it's ready to go for all of them. Notice N2. The next one down below should be N3, N4, N5, N6, and so on. But look at what happens to the ones that have dollar signs. They're the same every time. 
they're always referencing the same vertical lookup values that we gave. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you'd like to buy this pre-done, you can go ahead and purchase it. How that will work is I will share the form with you. Currently, I'm the only one that has access to it, so if you'd like it, I'll go ahead and share it with you after you purchase it, and then you'll need to go ahead and go to File and make a copy so that you won't damage this template. After you've made the copy, you can go ahead and go to Form and edit the form. Include anything that you need. Just remember that after you've saved your responses and saved your changes, you'll need to go back to the vertical lookup and change the score and the answers for each of these. If I change this to the word Google Form, that's not in a response that someone could have. So when I check, you see that it's not an applicable response. They did not find the correct value, therefore it couldn't look it up. You need to make sure that your responses match that of your actual form. Thanks, I hope you learned. And I hope you decide to use me for some of your Google Form or technical needs.